not a comic book. Now that's a comic book. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Comic Reviews. That is the most ghetto-ass way I can possibly do that. But it seems more effective than the technology that Google provides. Wrap your head around that one. Anyway, let me just get something queued up here so I can go and watch for comments seems more from effective people's. Than the technology uh, all right. That Google provides. Wrap your head around So that. it looks like I have anyway, a bigger stack of comics to talk about today than I actually do. And watch Yet again, the comic book store snubbed me on one. Uh, I haven't right. had a chance to read through all of another to catch up. So, so it looks like I have. Just bear with me. Hopefully next week do. I'll be able to go Yet through again, a tri uh, the five uh, issues a to read through all of something coming up here. In place of trade talk. Hopefully next week I'll be anyway. able to go again, through a tri the five. Stun me on this again. I have Something issue one, up here. I have issue three, uh, and I have issue four. Still no issue two. Anyway, you wouldn't think that it'd be this difficult, me on this but you'd be wrong. I have issue one, so I haven't read Godzilla Rage Across Time issue number four yet. I'm excited to, whenever I get the chance, when that will come, you'd be wrong. I have issue one, so I haven't read Godzilla Rage Across Time issue number four yet. I'm excited what else to we got you. here? Whenever Sam Wilson, James, Captain America, one number 15. Come, wrong. I, I was really curious so to read, read this, uh, the, the, the Sam Wilson book in particular. Else we got here. Cap, the Sam Wilson, book. Captain America, Captain America one with one everything that happened in the last issue. I was really curious to read this. Nick Spencer was very, very vocal on Twitter about the election. Sam Wilson, Captain America, with everything that happened. I was curious what he'd have to say. This still might have been written before that about the election, but given some of the context of what we're seeing, this still might have been written before that was not about the election, but given some of the context of what we're seeing, this still might have been written before that was not about the election, but that we some of this context today. One second. This still Sorry, might people watching after the fact. Given some of this context today. One second. This still Sorry, might people watching after the fact. Weird. It was piping. That's really strange. It looks like it was piping the audio from my speakers into my microphone because I didn't have a speaker plugged in. That's very strange. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, people in the live comments, just tell me real quick. Is it fixed? Are we good? I'll wait for a response. Is it good? Bad. Let me know in the comments. Sorry, people after the fact, this is the problem with doing it live. I'm sorry. Just something we'll have to deal with. Uh, Matthew, anybody? Can you tell me? Is it good, bad? Thank you very much. Okay. So I'll go ahead and start over. I was... Should I just start the whole episode over? <laughs> Oh, that's embarrassing. I'm sorry, guys. Okay. I don't have issue two of Godzilla Rage Cross Time. So, still waiting on that before I read issues three or four. I will do an issue that's coming up here. Uh, since I have all five of them now, I'll do it as its own thing in place of a trade probably next week. Now then, back to Sam Wilson, Captain America number 15, written by Nick Spencer. And I was really curious about the Sam Wilson book in particular because Nick Spencer is very vocal on Twitter about the election, and this is the first Captain America issue to come out after the results of the election were known. That being said, this may still have been written before all of that. Um, this, this may still have been written before we knew what the results were. 
But with some of the context of what's happening in here, maybe not. Um, it is a very, I don't want to say generic, um, it's a very any message you want to take out of it kind of thing, depending on how you're coming at it. Uh, no, nothing that's been going on in this book is really affected. This is just a take back, take a breath, stand on its own issue that like nothing major happens in. It's not meant to continue character development so much as it is to just... Or, yeah, it's more for continuing character development than it is for continuing plot development. Um, we don't learn anything new about anyone, but we just get to see them having some time to themselves. Uh... But the reason I'm not sure if he's talking about the election itself here or not is this very much seems like he's somewhat writing about it because it all it's all centered around professional wrestling, which presidential election and professional wrestling don't sound like they go together. But you got to remember Donald Trump was on... Our next president was on WWE. <sighs> what the fuck? That's not a sentence any person should ever have to say. Anyway. So the president was on WWE, so it seems like they're, that he's, he's playing with that idea here in some way, shape, or form. Um, I don't know. Sam has an interesting little bit of narration at the end. I know tomorrow we'll be back to the same old problems. We'll be at each other's throats all over again. But for now, we get to be what we always wanted to be. We get to be friends and allies again. We get to remember the good times. We get to be heroes. I don't know what he's trying to say with that. I don't know if it's about this idea of come together, uh, which is not an idea of sport. Matthew <laughs> Penny, you're a funny motherfucker. <laughs> Sorry, guys. This is the other part of doing it live. You, gotta, you should come live for some of these comments. Matthew Bennett says, I hope Trump does a flying kick to a foreign leader instead of an official declaration of war. Me too. At least it'll be entertaining. Yeah, this idea, though... God, you completely threw me off track. This idea of, you know, he won fair and square. We should come together. We should give him a chance. Not something I support. You don't give fascists a chance. Um, resist every step of the way. Fight tooth and nail for the love of God. Um... So not a message I support, if that's what he's trying to say. It's vague enough that you can maybe take something different from it, but that's the way I read it. If anyone else read this, um, let me know. I'm really excited for next issue, because Misty fucking Knight getting the shield sounds awesome. Just finished uh, Luke Cage on Netflix, and I liked it quite a bit. Misty Knight was by far one of the most interesting characters, and it was really neat to see how she was done on that. Um, and I, I really liked her. I had no idea who Misty Knight was, but through reading this, I really, really grew to like her, uh, at least Spencer's take on her, I should say. And so it was fun to see her in Luke Cage, and so I hope I hope we get some more of that, that sassy Misty, Misty Knight 
as the book or as the show continues. A little disappointed that they only teased her losing her arm but didn't follow through with it. It really should have followed through with that. Spoilers, I guess, but not really. Okay, moving on to Trinity number three, once again, by Francis Manipal, right? Is he doing just I, I see other names on here. Who's who's doing what? Where's the credits? Are they all at the end? I think they might be. He waited to the end to put credits in. I feel bad. I don't know who Steve Dillon is. Okay, so Francis Manipal just cannot keep up with the um, with doing the art and the the writing. So I think he's taking a back seat and just writing it. Clayman pencils, Clayman and Seth Man inks, Brad Anderson colors, Steve Wands letters. It would have been really neat to see Manipal continuing to do all the inks and stuff. Oh, well. Or all the, the pencils and stuff with it. Oh, well. I would have liked him to get through three issues. That would have been nice. Oh, four issues, whatever. Um, always fun to see the Zorro shout-out at the beginning of Batman. Like, honestly, I don't care when you rip something off. Well, no, nah, I take that back. I don't care when you when your premise is similar, but you do enough different and innovative with it. But if you are going to rip something off, I do like you to to acknowledge that and embrace it in a way, and that's something I've always been happy that they've they've moved to dealing with Batman by acknowledging Zorro. There's some really neat panel work in the beginning of this. I think I can tell Manipal's still scripting it as if he's the one that's going to draw it. Because each issue you've gotten some really beautiful panel work that incorporates panels in ways that we don't normally see them. You know, it's, it's really paying attention to that. I love the way that this splash page uses the sound effect of like huge letters that say boom to actually show the Wayne's deaths um, I th or bang my bad to, to actually show the Wayne, Wayne's deaths. Um, I think that's really clever. And then there's the second bang and this is a little harder to see. Maybe some thicker panel lines would have helped, but um Still an interesting panel design. Looks better. Yeah, you can see it better with some distance as the bat signal and then the words bang with the trinity in in the letters. Really cool how that all comes together. Um, innovative layout. I like how he's doing this. This is looking pretty good. Looking really good. Um, the story is just all right. It is really the way that it's. It's very emotional. It's not so much that it's. It's written incredibly well. It's just written with a lot of heart, so you can buy it. Um, Quinzel shows up briefly in this. I like that. They're using her kind of smart, even though it's not really Dr. Quinzel. Uh, Scarecrow makes an appearance, and he has a very uh, Batman the Animated Series look to him. So I quite like that. Uh, I always love the Batman the Animated Series design over most... Honestly, everything we've seen with Scarecrow otherwise? I've never... Well... I'm tempted to give a bit of a caveat to uh, Arkham Asylum, but still, no, animated series looks so much better. Um, I really just like the needle fingers in Arkham Asylum, so if you could maybe blend those two a little bit, that'd be fine. Um... Just 
really interesting use of panels here. That's you you rarely hear me talk about that, but some really interesting panel designs here. Get kind of a Batman man bat thing going on there. This shit's written with a lot of heart. That's all it comes down to. It's it's a really basic story. You breeze through it, but it's so it does have some some motion to it, but also it's just, you know, really, really pretty. And and so don't you don't care that you're breezing through it because it's just gorgeous to look at. I love some of these two-page spreads. You like the really Matthew Bennett, you like the Arkham version better than the Batman animated series. Like that or well, I should I should rephrase that. New Batman Adventures, Scarecrow, not Batman the Animated Series, because the original design for Scarecrow sucked. He was one of the few whose character design, new character model, actually looked good when they brought back the Animated Series and made it New Batman Adventures or whatever. But that's okay. I really do like the needle fingers from Arkham Asylum, so it's, it's hard not to, to pick that one, but God, just the, there's something so damn creepy about him. It looked like right out of a horror movie and, and new Batman adventures. Anyway, back to this. I like the way Wonder Woman looks here with this split panel of her and a monster that young Bruce Wayne has seen. Um, they're getting closer and closer to closer and closer to realizing they're not um, they are not in the real world or back in time or anything like that. I do like this moment, though. Again, it's written with a lot of heart. Batman to his younger self, Bruce, young Bruce Wayne. I know you're afraid, but stop being a brat. Bruce, listen to me. The death of Thomas, the death of Jason Todd, the death of Martha Wayne, the death of Tim Drake. It's not your fault. It's not our fault. And then Wonder Woman says, he's under some kind of spell blinding him from the truth. I can fix this. And so she wraps the lasso around his hand and Bruce says, it's not my fault. And then Alfred comes in. It never was, Master Bruce. I'll be here to remind you of that every day. Again, it's not incredibly complex or really, really deep. It's just got a lot of heart to it. Uh, okay, what's going on in the comments here? Matthew Bennett, crossover idea, Scarecrow versus Freddy Krueger. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Uh, Joel says, I like the Arkham Knight version compared to Asylum. It reminds me of Palpatine, but I haven't played Arkham Knight, so I don't know. We're talking about Scarecrow design still. And then Akuma Ranger, New Batman Adventure Scarecrow was the only redesign I liked. I like Batman's redesign. Um, just the, the squared off head and stuff, I really, really liked. It, it looked even better by the time we got to Justice League. Uh, to this day, Justice League Batman is still my favorite Batman design. Do, 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 do. Oh, he's all the way over there. Damn it. Yeah, I, I really, really like Justice League Batman. Um, just everything about him, the squared off head, everything really, really works for me. And it just looks damn good. It's, the head's just a little more... Like, this toy, it's obviously more detailed than the show was, but this thing, I like the length of the ears the way the cape drapes over the shoulders. Um, still my favorite Batman design overall. There are little things from other versions and comics and, and movies and stuff that I like better uh, here and there, like little things that I wish could be added to something like this and streamlined a bit, but no, I really, really love this Batman design. Um, I've, you know, it's silly as hell, but I want the 90s little crook shoulder things that serve literally no purpose, like little Tim Burton-y looking curves on the shoulder. I, I Fucking hold on, one minute. I know it's an Arkham Asylum. Ah, oh, shit, where's it at? 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 Oh, come on. Living hell. 
Oh, where's Arkham Asylum at? Um, there we go. Ah. I love the 90s little shoulder crook Batman. Oh, there's a good panel of it. Uh, er, nah, let me get closer. Dave McKean drawing Batman as a moving shadow is so fucking cool. There's a good panel of it. Um, with Joker grabbing Batman's ass right there. I love those little shoulder crooks. I so want those on film. You have no idea. It would make my day. 90s Batman was awesome. It made no sense, but it was awesome. Uh... Joel says, I like a lot of the Justice League designs. I feel they're the final products of an evolving DC animated universe. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think a lot of those designs are really, really fantastic. Uh, you know, they're they're a little simplistic, but they have to be for animation purposes. Um, not really related to this stuff. So Batman can sit there and just chill. Um... Yeah, the rest, like, this, it's it's not dense. It's not really getting you on a thinking level and making you, it's not pushing the art form at all, but it's written with so much heart that you can't help but love it a bit. Um, it really does, fundamentally, it gets who these characters are and what there is to love about them. Um, so you're, you're really getting... You know, if you love these characters, you, you should like this book quite a bit. Um, it's not doing much fundamentally pushing the medium or anything like that, like Tom King's Batman is, but it's still really fascinating. It's still really, really nice, heartfelt read. Um, and I'm, I'm excited to get to the Wonder Woman issue. I'm curious if... Manipal can knock it out of the park the way he has these first two issues with these two. Uh, should be fun. Anyway, I have any Coke left? Nope. Moving right along to Kong of Skull Island number five. One thing I hadn't been picking up on is they are not drawing the dinosaurs on, or the creatures of Skull Island, let me say, like just bigger T-Rexes or whatever. They are really going out of their way to make these very unique creature designs. And it's not a very good angle on it. Let me get to like the very end so you can see. Um, like there's some, you know, it's, it's a raptor or whatever, but at the end you get a really good look at one of these fuckers. Oh, and they're actually putting feathers on raptors. Nice. Uh, you get a really good look at one of these. They give you a nice full page spread. That would be a two headed T-Rex. You know, that's, that's fucking cool. Um... Movie, maybe, should just be this book? Is, is that a thing we can do? Because that's awesome. And I want more. And you see little little hints at that throughout the, the book. Um, so it's, it's much more fantastical kind of monsters that Kong's fighting in this. And the, the political intrigue continues, but it's not... It's all going on throughout the action. That's what I like about it. It's not like, okay, action, 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 now plot development, now action, action, action. It's all happening throughout the action. It's interspersed quite well, and I really like that about it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Good shit, y'all. It's good shit. A lot of political intrigue. That stuff's... It's just fine. Like, I don't... 
I'm not upset about it or, or annoyed with it or anything because I'm enjoying it well enough compared to all the stuff we're seeing. The art is really keeping pace with the rest of this. My biggest problem is still that just people look a little too much alike. So I think it's helping the way they're, they're splitting up the clothing choices as we've kind of, you know, dwindled out the cast of the book. Um, but yeah, this is fucking awesome, guys. Really good series. Enjoying the hell out of it. Let's go ahead and move on to something I don't have, but I'll talk about all five issues next week in place of trade talk. And then talk about Black Hammer. Hold on. Before we do that, let's let's stick with King Kong as I got a quick comment from Matthew Bennett. It'll probably be a joke. Although a giant two-headed T-Rex is hella cool, I feel like it would clash with the tone set by the this universe and get memed. Maybe, but just do you really give a fuck? Like, wouldn't you just be okay with getting to see King Kong fight a gigantic two-headed T-Rex? Like, isn't that worth whatever people would say about it? That is true. Godzilla is going to fight King Ghidorah, so we could set King Ghidorah up as, like, an offshoot of the residents of Skull Island, maybe? Maybe? Yeah. Anyway. No, just, I don't, I don't care. It's, it's fucking awesome. Uh, but yeah, anyway, let's go ahead and go on to Black Hammer. Let's stop talking about giant two-headed T-Rexes and start talking about, uh, <laughs> start talking about, you know, artsy stuff like black hammer um the odyssey of randall weird so again we're we're just getting backstory in these first few issues for each member like each member of the the team that stranded um we're just getting an issue dealing with like what exactly their shtick was what kind of comic character they were. And this is kind of twofold. It kind of covers um, both uh, Randall Weird and Talkie Walkie. Uh, we also get a little preview of what exactly they were all fighting. And it's basically Darkseid and Galactus had a baby. I mean, Darkseid and Galactus, I'm sure, would have a very ugly baby. That looks like what, what it would look like if Darkseid and Galactus had a baby. Uh, and that's that's what they were fighting that got them into this whole mess in the first place. Um, so yeah. And then we get a little wacky scene that I'm not quite sure how to place. Because he's talking to this, this woman at the beginning. Her name's Eve. And so he, he can, like, walk in and out of rooms through the parazone. And the conversation goes, Eve, I've been waiting for this. Eve talks. It, it can't be. You can't be real. It's me, Eve. I'm here. But how? We all thought you were dead. No, not dead. Not yet. What, what year is it? 1964. You've been gone almost nine years. We thought... We thought the Russians had gotten you. God, it is you. You you left me alone, Randy. Why? Why did you leave? I didn't mean to. I was lost. I am lost. What do you mean you are lost? You're right here. No, I'm not. I have to go now. I have something I need to do. But you just got here. Why can't you just stay? There is a design to it all, but I cannot manipulate it. I cannot change that design. I am as helpless to follow its curves and angles as you are. Goodbye, Eve. I love you. Always. And then he has a conversation with... Um, damn it, what's her name? Gil? Jill? Uh... Anyway, he has a conversation with her where she's asking him, 
why he can't save them by taking them through the parazone. And he's like, he says, because I did try once before, a woman pleaded with me to take with me to take her with me just like you are now and she gail is her name i'm sorry gail but i will not take you through the parazone i cannot and then he disappears and then we're given this really trippy fucking image so get ready for it I'm guessing that's the woman that pleaded with him to take her with him through the parazone. And then we're shown this scene. Are you sure, Eve? I still do not think this is a good idea. Yes, I want to come with you, explore the parazone. I don't want to be alone here anymore, and I don't want you to be alone either. And as they're getting ready to enter the pair zone, he freaks out and runs away. So I think... I'm not sure what Eve was... Yeah, what the fucking shit is that? Exactly. I'm not sure what the conversation with Eve was, whether or not he, he actually talked to her, like, back on Earth in the... 60s or whatever happened with that or if like <sighs> head hurts if she's somehow trapped in the parazone just like he can be and like her physical body is somewhere but her mind's still caught up with the present or something i don't know it's really weird it's really trippy and we're just getting little little pieces of everything as it goes. It's very intentional. Uh, next one will be the issue with the magic lady. So that'll happen. Mm. Cool. All right, final issue of the week is Batman. Number 11. God, Tom King. Dude, this is so fucking fascinating. <sighs> There's a lot of stuff being said with this very quick, very... It's weird because the dialogue isn't isn't complicated. It's, it's really base dialogue that... Honestly, if it were any other characters, I'd be like, okay, that's a really, really basic conversation, and the writer didn't put much thought into it, but there's something going on here. Cat, please, it's enough. Bat, if it was enough, I'd be back in Arkham, tied up tight for all the naughty things I've done. But instead, here I am. So I suppose it's not quite enough. You tore your ACL in the fall. I know. You'll need surgery. The price you pay for always landing on your feet. You shouldn't have jumped. You knew I wouldn't make it. I knew you wouldn't make it. You might have told me. I shouted. I didn't hear. Because you were running away. Because you were chasing me. You killed 237 people, Cat. I had to chase you. I killed 237 people, Bat. I had to run. Enough. No. No. Enough. You know what they'll do to me? They'll kill me. If you do this, if you bring me in, 237 dead, what am I supposed to do? If you do this right now, between us, what's between us, that will be enough. What am I supposed to do? Cat, what am I supposed to do? Just don't let go, Bat. You know, kitties and water and all that. There's a lot dense shit going on right now. 
it's like that's a really fascinating conversation. I love the way I love the way it's timed. You you have this great little exchange of of what was going on between Batman and Catwoman when he initially caught her for what put her in Arkham. And then like it's it's the end of that conversation as Batman is hugging Catwoman in that final panel there. What am I supposed to do? And you turn the page and the first thing you see is the word now and then Catwoman saying, just don't let go, Bat. And it's, of course, in reference to a completely different thing, but this is cinematic pacing in a lot of... Well, not cinematic. This is this very intentional pacing and, and distortion of what dialogue means. There's a lot of repetition going on in this book, and I'm not sure what it's about but it's really working on me. <laughs> oh. Man. And then there's just some really fascinating looking stuff. Like, I love this scene of dialogue that's happening all on this two-page spread as Catwoman and Ventriloquist crawl through and up and down and around pipes uh, getting into a specific wing of Santa Prisca. It's just really a neat thing. There's a conversation I'll go on throughout it, and I don't even care about that so much as just the, the look of all the pipes and, and how that is a really clever way It's very M.C. Escher in a way, but it has a natural, there's a natural flow to it, because you start here, you go here, he directs you down here, then there, and then your next thing is right here, you follow her, you follow him there, you follow him there, 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 there. It perfectly guides you through the whole thing. I love it. Um, yeah, really well done, done stuff. Um, I'm really enjoying this as a Bane story. I just want more Bane. That's all I want right now is more Bane, and I'm sure we're going to get it soon, but that's really all I'm waiting for right now. Um, that and I want Bane to have his mask on. Really want Bane to have his mask on. Please and thank you, Tom King. Really good issue. A lot of, lot of dense, really fascinating dialogue happening here. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Just good stuff, guys. Really good stuff. All right. As I said, next week it'll be Doctor Who, The Five Doctors, or no, wait, uh, Supremacy of the Cybermen, Five Doctors, that was a while ago. It'll be uh, Supremacy of the Cybermen uh, next week for Trade Talk. Um, let's see, how many books did I do? One, two, three, four, five. I'll do, yeah, I can do live talk, uh, live comment answering stuff for a couple minutes if y'all want. Um, it's 7.51s right now, so I can go to 8 if I start getting some questions and they take me long enough. Um, we'll see what happens there. In the meantime, um, for those that don't know, the writer of Bombshells, Margaret Bennett, is getting her own Batwoman book, uh, Batwoman solo book, that I am super fucking excited for, and I I cannot wait. So I'm I'm gonna get that whenever that starts coming out. Um, love what she does with bombshells. So I'm incredibly excited for uh, her Batwoman solo book. Kathy Kane, not a character I've ever particularly cared for one way or another. Love what she's doing with her in bombshells though. So I'm really excited to see her write. You know, Batwoman, uh, modern Batwoman. 
Joel Davis asks, are you going to pick up the Darth Maul miniseries before, set before the Phantom Menace? Um, maybe. I, I could do that. I know that he's popped up in Rebels Season 3, so I guess there's not a ton of room to explore anything after the Clone Wars series now that they're doing stuff with him. So I guess setting it before Menace makes sense. Um, I'll probably do it just because there's like a... There's a pretty good chance that Palpatine will show up in it, and I'm a sucker for Palpatine, so... I'll probably pick it up for that reason, um, if nothing else. And I like Darth Maul, too, but I don't know. It's just before Phantom Menace stuff, kind of iffy for me. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll probably pick that up. I don't know when the first issue is set to drop or who's writing it or anything like that, but I'll give it a shot. Anyone got any other questions for me? Huh? Huh? Anybody? I don't know if I mentioned it last time. I know I mentioned that I work at a dice place and all that stuff, but I don't know how many tabletop gamers I have in my audience, but if you ever buy Chessex product, there's now a very good chance that I'm the one that had something to do with it, uh, either making the set or, or something like that. So just for your information, if you want to go buy Chessex dice or gaming supplies. What would win in a fight? A two-headed giant T-Rex or an elk of equal size? A giant elk. Hmm. I'm just trying to think, like, like what would... Oh, you play magic? Cool. Uh, we don't do anything with magic cards. I don't know if dice are ever involved in, in playing magic. Um, but... We buy like mats. We use those. I don't. I don't know if you do that. Anyway, <laughs> um, but elk versus giant two-headed T-Rex. Um, I just can't imagine what advantages an elk would have in a fight with a giant two-headed T-Rex. I mean, obviously the the antlers would be of some use, but you know. It's a two-headed T-Rex. I, I think it'll manage. So apparently, dice are used when playing Magic. Um, that's cool. Give me a sec. I'll be right back. So I've never been like a tabletop gaming type, um, but just working at the dice place really, you know, makes you want to, you know, buy dice or whatever just to have them. And I talked about this a little bit last week about getting, you know, a, a mat or something and maybe making my own board game. And so I decided to make my own RPG, and I bought what's called. A battle mat. This is actually called a Mondo mat. Son of a bitch is huge. This takes up like all the floor in my living room. Uh, it's really, really big. Anyway, that's like a hundred dollar mat. If you were to go on our website and buy one, I got it for thirty six dollars because it's like a factory second. It has some little defect that honestly I can't find. It's a factory second, and we get a 50% discount. So I got it for like 36 bucks, which is pretty awesome. So yeah, I'm going to use that and my dice and shit from around the apartment as game pieces on the board that uh, are affected by the dice and everything. So that should be fun. I'm, I'm excited for that. I was going to write out the rules for it this weekend. I just never got around to it. Uh, Haley wasn't feeling well, so I was taking care of her a lot of the time. Um... But yeah, so I'm excited to be doing that. I might make a video about that or something uh, if the mood strikes. But just keeping you all updated on my goings on. Uh, Joel says, I can't wait for next week review. Supremacy of the Cybermen sounds really cool. My friend Red Leader loves Cybermen. Cybermen are cool. Uh, they're no Daleks, but they're they're fun. Um, 
I'm excited to read it. I was just annoyed with my comic store for... Like, you know the books are selling and flying off the shelves. Why don't you order enough to sit on the shelf? I don't know. It It's just... It's annoying. Okay, Matthew Bennett asks, Donald Trump versus Hitler in a fist fight. Who wins? We all do. We all win. Um... The victor gets kicked in the balls 9,000 times. Uh, Joel says, hey, I'm a Dalek fanboy too. Davros is my number one fave Doctor Who character, mostly thanks to Big Finish. I'm kind of iffy on, on Davros. Uh, Akumra... Akuma Ranger says, would you consider Kingdom Come a spiritual sequel to New Frontier? You know, I've never thought of them in that way. But, I, you know, thinking about both stories, keep in mind I've only read through Kingdom Come once a long time ago. And never read New Frontier, just seen the movie. Just thinking about what I know about the stories... I could see that. I, you know, I'm sure you could find things here or there that, like, um, like contradict each other, but I doubt it's anything big enough to be a huge problem. Uh, so I could, I could see that. That'd be an interesting way to read those, as if they are, uh, you know, the beginning of this universe and the end of this DC universe, huh? I feel like Kingdom Come was what um, Frank Miller was trying to do with DK2. Except, you know, good. Joel says, I feel Donald Trump would win because he seems a little more fist fight attitude to him while Hitler just seems meek. It's, it's a point. It's a good point. Um, I just think we all win getting to see the, those two beat the shit out of each other. And then the the winner gets kicked in the balls 9,000 times before he slit his throat. That's where I'm standing on it. Don't report me to the CIA. I got reported to the CIA, apparently. <laughs> I posted a tweet, and it's like currently, as I say this right now, it's my pinned tweet on my profile, which is, can someone tase Mike Pence in the face so he walks around for a week wondering whether or not he's gay? Um, and there's just, you know, a joke about the fact that Mike Pence believes in gay conversion and all this stuff. And someone got all pissy with me. I, I triggered a Trump supporter. They got all pissy with me and, like, screen capped my tweet and then put it in a video about crybaby liberals and and i got a youtube message about it saying that i've been reported to the fbi and cia and that i had to kiss obamacare goodbye and and say sayonara to gay marriage and now that trump was president and all this other stuff and then it was just like it was a really poorly made video of just like tweets and facebook posts from people on the left complaining or whatever about trump uh, winning the election and then it was like you know different weird ass videos that like showed how awful we were or whatever I don't know um, Joel says oh please I'm sure you and Steve have been on CAA's list for way longer than that I'll have to ask Tom King <laughs> oh it's funny man I knocked my throat against a box, and it's been bothering me ever since. Oh, well, it's 8. I'm not getting a ton of questions in. I'll just wait another second or two to see if anyone says anything else. But that's probably going to do it for this week's episode of Comic Reviews. Uh, tune in next week. Hopefully I'll be able to read through all of Supremacy of the Cybermen in time. Oh, Philip Keaton. You got in just in time. Because last week I know you left a question and I didn't get to answer it. Uh, I noticed it right after I signed off. Here's a question. Have you noticed Batman in year one is metaphorically a kid? 
Oh, I'd have to think about that while I reread year one before I could give you much of an answer. Um, I'm trying to think right now of stuff that, that would make me come away with that interpretation. I'm trying to think of moments in year one that would give me that feeling. And nothing's coming to mind, but that'd be something that that'd be a theme to look for as I read through it again. So whenever I, I next reread through year one, whenever that may be, I'll, I'll keep an eye out for that. And maybe I'll do it on comic reviews somewhere down the line here. But just as of right now, I've never picked up on anything like that. Uh, Akuma Ranger also asks, would you say this year was the most toxic election ever? Ever, ever, or modern ever? Um, ever, ever, no. In modern American politics, God, yes. Um, you're making a thesis about the Batman as a child thing. Interesting idea. I'd, I'd be curious to read that paper. Um, ever, well, you, you're probably right in another language, aren't you? I'm trying to think of, of another election to talk about, though. That was just clearly worse. you got to remember the way that those old guys used to talk uh, to each other because people never saw any of it, so they could say whatever the fuck they wanted. Um, do yourself a favor. Go check out some, some old-term elections, but... As far as modern American politics, using the word modern as commercials existing, uh, you know, actual campaigning, yes. God, yes. Uh, certainly the worst in the last 100 years. So I'll give you that. Uh, I'll go for another minute or two now that I'm getting a couple questions. Philip Kiel Kelton, yeah, Kelton. Uh, do you remember what your question was from last time? Because I unfortunately do not. But I'll I'll answer it if you do. Um, what else can I tell you all about? My insane beatboxing skills. That's what I can tell you about. Sorry, I'm just trying to kill time. Kill a couple minutes. People watching this after the fact, I don't know if you stick around for the Q&A part, but I hope this is at least somewhat entertaining for you. Uh, no, not, not getting many questions, and I don't want to just sit here waiting on them. Um, and for people watching, am I going to do a Thanksgiving special? Let's see here. When's Thanksgiving Day? What is Thanksgiving Day? I don't even know, to be honest with you. Is it the 24th? Um, okay, when is Thanksgiving? Okay, so it's Thursday, November 24th. So maybe like a special episode posted. Well, okay, so tomorrow you're getting What Our Fathers Did in Nazi Legacy. That'll be the Geeky Gentleman posted on that, which is a documentary discussion review. Uh, we've already recorded, and actually it's live right now, the episode on that we're doing after that. Uh, spoilers for tomorrow about what Rasco picks. We're talking about Titanic, and that will go up on the 24th. So regardless, you'll get an episode that day, but you know what? Um, we're recording Friday. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that. I can post uh, two episodes on the, the 24th. I can do that if, if, we, can, uh, if we have enough time to record a, another episode. That'd be fine. Um... So yeah, if, if we have time, if you have suggestions for a Thanksgiving special, go ahead and leave them now. Uh, Thanksgiving special, we screwed over the natives. We already, like, that's all we've talked about. That's why we do History Month is because 
November has the holiday of lies in it. This idea of, oh, we sat down together and, and we're cooperative and that's really what this country is based on. No, that's not what this fucking country is based on. This country is based on white people fucking murdering natives. <laughs> murdering, giving disease, raping, uh, cultural genocide. That's what this country is based on. So no fucking God, it's giving me such horse shit. Um, and it's like it comes, well, if you don't believe it, then why do you celebrate the modern holiday? Because it's not what the holiday is really about. It's just what it's based on. It's based on a fucking lie. Um, the holiday is now celebrated as a modern chance. It's just an excuse for families to get together and, and, you know, have a good meal and, you know, spend time together. Um, that's what the holiday is about. It's this idea of, okay, take some time, spend it with your family and tell everybody what you're thankful for this year. All right. Um, Joel suggested a Thanksgiving Day special about propaganda and indoctrination. We've already done an episode about propaganda for a history month a couple years ago, so you can go check that out in the Geeky Gentleman playlist. Um, Matthew Bennett suggests a Charlie Brown special. Dude, no. No, I can't. I can't. How the fuck do you review Charlie Brown? No. Fuck you. That's impossible. <laughs> no way. No. <laughs> Can't review a Charlie Brown Thanksgiving. For shame on you for thinking so. Um, or do a review of a South Park episode that deals with the topic. Now we probably wouldn't do it as a review. I like for for specials for holiday specials. I kind of like it to be a, a topic more. Um. Except for Christmas. I'd like to get another Christmas Day commentary posted for y'all, but we'll see if that happens or not. Because um, we, we missed it last year and I felt bad. Uh, okay. What would we talk about? You know, I just thought of an idea earlier. Now I can't remember it. I got a couple ideas that we could post on Thanksgiving, though they ne wouldn't necessarily be related to Thanksgiving itself. Um, Joel says this is a Star Wars propaganda book with like fictional propaganda. If I'm interested, no thanks, I'm good. Uh, sounds like somewhat fascinating, but not something I'd be willing to spend money on. Okay. I think that'll do it. I'll think up a topic for a Thanksgiving Day special E, assuming we can record on Thanksgiving or record something extra to post that day. Um, November was kind of a, a short month on what I could post because let's see, you're only getting one, two, three, four, getting four regular episodes and four um, additional episodes still, but it just, the days kind of worked out weirdly. Um, so, yeah. That happened. In any case, that'll do it for this week's episode of Comic Reviews. Everyone, thank you very much for watching. <laughs> cool, Joel. Uh, everyone, thank you very much for watching. Thanks for coming live. More people come live. I'll, I'll do this some more. Uh, until next time, I'm Sid Bartu, and I'll be reviewing comics and talking with y'all. <laughs>